For anybody who's tried to get an effect onto Spark AR Hub, you'll know the pain and sorrow that is quite often known as the approval process. Now, quite often the approval processes are done by a human being and quite often they can take, well, from my experience, a couple of days. Although in recent weeks, it does seem to have been more like recent, uh, a couple of weeks rather than days. So quite a lot of problems that quite often get highlighted are to do with the use of text and logos and identities. Now, if we look at the Spark AR review policies on their website, and we just sort of take a look at section two, uh, 2.3 and 2.4 specifically, uh, you'll notice here where it says under 2.3, any use of logos must appear only the natural part of the effect. Logos must be integrated into the scene. They must fall into one of the categories below. It needs to respond to movement for, for the use of face tracking or integrated into a 3D object that also uses ISIS world tracking, for example, a movable boombox. And they must not be excessive. So what this basically means is you are f freely allowed to use logos or brand identities um, as part of your effect as long as they are not static by this definition here. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily mean it will be approved if you do follow these guidelines. You must also have rights to that logo, otherwise there are other legal liabilities that you could face down the line. And if your effect is deemed as created by a company or institution, that can also have your effect uh, flagged, for example. Now I can speak from experience because I've tried to create a effect for the place where I work, which utilizes a logo. And I've implemented it into a 3D object following these guidelines here. And it was disapproved because I couldn't prove that I had the rights to use the logo despite the fact that I had the rights to use the logo. And I, it took quite a few of uh, go to and froing. My effect was approved. Then it was taken down. Then I appealed it and it got approved again. Then it got taken down. And basically at that point, I sort of gave up. Because essentially at any point, even if your effect does go through, they can always take it down if at some point they review it again and think, oh, actually it doesn't follow the guidelines despite you specifying to them it does and showing them all the evidence appropriate. So yeah, that's fun. Um, another roadblock that quite often people hit into is the use of text. Why does Spark AR hate text? Well, sad fact is it's um, not for the reasons you may have thought. See, I would have thought that the reason that text could be an issue could be the fact that text wouldn't be necessarily uh, immediately legible by a um, sort of computer algorithm to check for profanities or offensive language. Um, or I may have thought it could have been something to do with uh, translate, transla um, you know, languages, translating that text into other languages may not be possible. Therefore, you're isolating your audience could be a perceived issue. In fact, that doesn't actually seem to be the case. And most of the approval uh, rejections tend to come from it not being integrated into the scene accordingly. So what does Facebook deem as being appropriately implemented into the scene? So according to their guidelines here under 2.4a and two, uh, um, a1 and a2, a3, the text must respond, should respond to movements with the use of face tracking, i.e. piece of clothing. Okay. Uh, the text should be, could be integrated into a 3D object. Okay. And the text should be integral to the design of the effect i.e. a timestamp in an effect that simulates a camcorder. This one here makes a lot of sense, it being integrated into the effect, actually being part of the design, that's fine. And I think that's an easy one to, um, you know, abide by. These two here, these are where the kind of issues arise. Because again, I see a lot of people's effects implementing text that would abide by the fact of it following a user or using face tracking or uh, implemented into a world scene or target tracking and it would follow and mate, mate these two guidelines but they get refused for not being implemented correctly.
although it specifies here it should respond to the use of 3D space and these effects that I've seen quite often do. So could it be that the text is not clear and large enough to read? Well again that doesn't make a huge amount of sense because quite often I've seen a lot of these effects that get rejected and the text quite often is legible. Um, and the size, if it's affected by 3D scale, that is quite often to do with the way it's positioned in that 3D scene and how close the camera is to the object. So again, that doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Text must not be excessive. Okay, this one is fine. This one I actually kind of agree with, that the text should be used sparingly. Uh, and also, I actually also agree with the text must not be used to promote people away from the effect to other platforms. That makes sense. They don't want people going onto Snapchat or other uh, companies now, do they? So that's fine. But again, what is deemed as excessive, they say, is one sentence. But what, what if that one sentence is a long sentence? What is the appropriate word count? Are you going to give us a limit on that? That, that again doesn't seem to be made super clear and again that does seem to be very independent on who you are if you're if you make a lot of effects your effects are more likely to get approved even if they don't follow these guidelines strictly because you've uploaded a lot before so you've got recognition again it does seem to be very pick and choose and it quite often has to do with who is actually looking at the effect and reviewing it at the time so it's a bit of a minefield it's a bit of a um, pain in the backside uh, so, what are my recommendations as to try and avoid these hurdles? Well, obviously where possible, try not to use logos or text, although that does limit a lot of options, uh, especially for quite uh, trending effects such as the um, kind of what are you kind of effect that's going on at the moment, it's quite a popular one that people are creating. Um, and that obviously utilises a question, and that would be deemed as text. Um, does that text count if it's a graphic? That Again, that seems to be hit and miss. There's no verification on whether that seems to be true or false. And again, I'd be interested in hearing people's responses in the comments down below and their experiences on whether, why their effects got rejected or how they got approved or any stories they have regarding this because it'd be quite interesting to follow up and see if there's a kind of more regular pattern that we can de, uh, sort of formulate from this. Um, so in terms of like text, I'd probably avoid using text where possible and try and use iconography. So instead of um, using text to ask sort of a question, maybe use icons to represent what that question would be. Uh, it's a bit iffy and it wouldn't necessarily work with all examples, but could be could be a workaround. Um, use of instructions. Now, again, you can set custom instructions, but again, the list of custom instructions are quite limited. They don't actually implement all the options you can do with Spark AR. So quite often people having to create uh, their own like UI elements or uh, design elements for the HUD. And some of that would actually could be seen as contradictory to 2.4 and 2.3 because this could actually be seen as uh, not following these guidelines. But then that means you'd have to, so if you want uh, custom instructions, that aren't part of the custom instructions that they give you. That means that your text has to keep being moved, has to keep moving or has to be animated in some way. And that doesn't make for a very nice user experience, especially if they're wanting to work out how to play a game in Spark, for example. So that's a bit of a an issue there. Another thing that I get a little bit annoyed with is when I've uh, submitted effects before now and they said oh it must be using the Instagram camera oh it must be using the Facebook camera I record the videos using the Instagram camera or the Facebook camera when I'm submitting them and quite often or a couple of times now I've had them rejected saying oh you haven't recorded using the actual camera it's like I have can't you see that I'm pointing my phone at the face or target in the real world and it is doing the effect desired result I'm not using the emulator at that point. I am actually using it on my real mobile device and yet they can still reject it because I don't think it's been used. And then they'll come back with, oh, well, well actually um, it's because it's not, the lighting isn't quite right. It's like, well, the lighting is daylight. It's as bright and as light as possible. It's clearly visible. It's so hit and miss on who reviews and how the person at the other end sees your effect. 
it's 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 annoying. Uh, it's like here the uh, photographs of Hexen must not contain photographs of people, whether they're real or fictional. And yet there are multiple effects out there on Instagram uh, filter list I could look for them right now that utilize photos of celebrities or fictional characters that aren't theirs, that haven't had any uh, work done to them, that would actually hereby contradict or not be approved under 2.11 guideline here. So yeah. Uh, so look at anything else here. Names cannot contain Instagram usernames or businesses or people's names. Again, that could be a little bit of a mar pit. Icons must use the owner's face if a face is included, and yet you don't really want you to use photos of people. So this could also be a, technically a breach, I suppose, of their own earlier terminology and saying that they don't want you to use pictures of people or images of people, but yet you have to use a photo of yourself or video of yourself for the submission, which then kind of is putting your own sort of rights on the line and can breach GDPR, for example, in some countries. Um, demo videos, no screencasts. Okay, that's fine. You just press the hold and record the record button in the app, which is what I do. Uh, da, 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 da. No boomerangs, no images, icons, or buttons applied after recording. And again, this can be a problem for some effects because some effects they only would apply or appear when they're recording because that's the desired effect for the AI element or the experience to be. So again, that's a, a problem. But again, you can argue this if you speak to the end person. You can sometimes get it approved if you explain it to them clearly. But again, it's just not super black and white kind of. This works, this doesn't work, this will work for everybody, this only works for you, X, Y, and Z. It's so vague, it's so annoying. Yeah, content must not be shocking, sensational, disrespect for excessively violent, cannot uh, promote illegal products. And yet again, the, all these things here, there are effects out there that I have seen that promote alcohol or promote marijuana or can be seen as violent or you know, again, it's like publicly recently they had the uh, no cosmetic surgery or plastic surgery effect uh, thing, which again, I agree to in principle, I agree to that. And yet they still have filters on there that will use that. They still allow for the options for distortion, which again could be seen as plastic surgery. But again, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, depending on who's reviewing it. Uh, gambling, that's again, I totally agree with that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Can't use hashtags. Okay, that's fine. QR codes or the scramble codes. Again, that's all fine. These ones, though, do seem to be allowed for companies or big brands. I've seen some big brands use these and they seem to be fine with it. But again, I suppose that's because they've got multiple multi millionaires rather than some Joe blogs off the street. And yeah, it's just. You read through these policies and you start thinking and you start trying to submit something and you realize how tricky it can be just to get your filter on Facebook or Instagram when it can follow all of these and yet at the same time it contradicts itself in parts by actually its own actions. So that is the fun and games that is the Spark AR review policy process. And quite often I'll get people asking me questions in emails or on Twitter or on the YouTube channel. Why is not work or why am I showing you to use text when it says you shouldn't be using text? And the reason I do that is just to highlight a design that's not exactly, I never, anything I create for the tutorials, I don't submit. So none of the effects I've created for tutorials are actually live. I don't submit them live because I know that some of them wouldn't necessarily abide by these policies or guidelines and they have to give you a starting point not to be the end point. And these policies could change tomorrow with things like um, copper now becoming uh, interaction soon and um, privacy policies changing in depending on different countries. 
any of these policies could be reviewed and changed and one minute your effect could work, the next minute it could not. Simple truth. Anyway, sorry this has been a bit of a kind of semi-bleak view or video, but I just sort of wanted to highlight some of the um, lesser known problems or queries you could run into when you're trying to get your effect uh, live and then the importance of looking at the review policies and arguing with the reviewer if you think that your effect does not uh, contradict their own guidelines. So I'm just going to drop this link down in the description for this video below. And I've been Stephen Fisher. This has been the Catalyst channel. If you like what I do, remember to like, comment and subscribe. And please let me know your own experiences of the approval process if you can. And thank you for watching and goodbye.